Disney's newest roller coaster is finally almost open and Epcot now has bragging rights to being the most exciting park in Disney World. Or does it? So is this new ride all it's cracked up to be? We got a chance to ride before it opens to the public on May 27th, 2022. And we've got the tips, the secrets, and the cold hard facts about Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So why are Marvel superheroes making a home next to Spaceship Earth and Mission Space? Is this thrill ride really all that thrilling? And will it make me barf? We rode Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind five times so far and counting. For science, of course, so that we could find out the answer to all those questions for you. Let's jump in. This is Epcot's first roller coaster in Disney's longest indoor coaster. It's actually the longest indoor coaster in the world. It's also the first Disney coaster to feature a reverse launch, and it's the first Omni-style Disney coaster, meaning you'll be spinning around to catch all the action. This is also Disney World's first Marvel attraction. With a 42-inch height requirement, Cosmic Rewind isn't for the entire family, but if your kiddos are tall enough to ride Space Mountain and Expedition Everest, they're good to ride this one. As far as intensity, Epcot's new coaster is a little more intense than Space Mountain, but not quite as thrilling as Rock and Roller Coaster. It's just as smooth as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, though. And it does reach speeds of a little over 50 miles per hour, which is as fast as Expedition Everest over in Animal Kingdom. We'll get into the ride experience and just how much you need to worry about that nausea factor in just a bit. Let's talk first about how this fits into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and why there's suddenly an intergalactic pavilion inside Epcot. You may remember Xandar from the Guardians of the Galaxy films. It's home to the Nova Corps, an intergalactic police task force who enlists the help of the Guardians of the Galaxy to save their planet from Ronan the Accuser in the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. The Xandarians wanted to share their knowledge with us Terrans, Earthlings, and at the suggestion of Star-Lord, aka Peter Quill, aka Chris Pratt, for those of you who are just on board for a new Disney ride and not so much the full Marvel storyline, they built a pavilion in Disney World's Epcot so we can experience their culture like we do with the countries around World Showcase. Glenn Close reprises her role as Nova Prime, joined by Terry Crews, who plays Centurion Tal Merrick. Both of them will welcome you to the wonders of Xandar Pavilion. In the queue, you'll get to see artifacts and technologies from Xandar while making your way through the Galaxarium and the Xandar Gallery. You'll also catch clips of the morning show, Good Morning Xandar, where the host interviews the Guardians of the Galaxy. Please pay attention for some fun Easter eggs in there as well, especially if you're a longtime Epcot fan. And after you wind through the queue, you'll be transported to a Nova Corps Star Charter through the use of some Xandarian tech to learn about the Cosmic Generator. That's a way to jump through space, so you don't need to make the two and a half million year trek to Xandar the slow way. And that's when things start to go a little bit wrong. A celestial named Eson means to correct humanity's mistakes by rewinding time by using the cosmic generator. Nova Prime calls on the Guardians of the Galaxy to save the galaxy and, of course, Earth and any mistakes we have made. Star-Lord, Gamora, Drax, Rocket, and Groot reprogram your escape pods, your ride vehicle, to chase down Eson, making you an honorary guardian of the galaxy. Now, time to get into that nausea factor a little bit, because honestly, that was the biggest deal for me riding the coaster. While not the most intense coaster you've ever been on, Cosmic Rewind has a lot of elements that working together can make you feel a little bit strange. It's going to spin you around quite a bit, even though you don't necessarily feel that you're spinning around because there's so much to see. Your body knows you're spinning around and your brain's telling you one thing and your body's telling you another thing and that can cause some problems. It's a very, very smooth spin. But again, like I said, your brain's telling you one thing and your body's telling you another. And that's when nausea happens. So that's not gonna cause motion sickness for everyone, but it did for me. Like I said, the intensity factor is somewhere above Space Mountain, but not quite as thrilling as Rock and Roller Coaster. And with that reverse launch, a little bit of spinning, very, very dark, and you're looking everywhere because there are screens literally above you, behind you, everywhere. It's kind of hard to focus in on everything you wanna focus in on while your body's kind of being thrown around a whole bunch. Usually a coaster just goes forward, right? goes forward and backwards and twists and turns and corkscrews. And so again, your body and your brain are just kind of fighting a little bit to keep equilibrium. Now, when I say corkscrew, I don't want you to freak out. There's no upside down portion of this coaster. The corkscrew actually kind of goes down almost like a drain. 
All right, so it is very dark, dark, dark in there, and you are hurtling around planets, jump points created by the Cosmic Generator, the Guardian ship, and that massive Celestial Eson. There are no major drops, and the movement is pretty smooth, but you are turning in a lot of different directions at a pretty fast speed. So yeah, you're moving around a bunch. It's a huge, huge, huge coaster. It's a huge, huge, huge indoor experience that nobody's ever experienced something like that before because it is the longest indoor coaster. So feels long and your body is kind of fighting for that equilibrium the whole time. So that's why I was a little nauseated, but we'll have a few tips for that later on because I did have to ride five plus times. So I figured out how to work through it. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that in a second. So how to ride? Well, when Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind opens on May 27th, 2022, it will not have a standby line. Your options to ride are to join a virtual queue or purchase individual attraction selection lightning lane access through Disney Genie Plus. Because there's no standby line, guests must have a boarding group in the virtual queue to ride if you want to ride for free. Registration for the virtual queue is accessible through the My Disney Experience app. Disney's used virtual queues before for Rise of the Resistance and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And to book one, you'll need your park tickets, your park pass reservations for Epcot, and everyone you want to ride with linked up in your My Disney Experience account in order to join the virtual queue. Do all of that before your trip so you don't waste time when you're trying to join the virtual queue on your Epcot day, because I imagine that those spots are going to sell out quickly. In the past, virtual queues have opened at 7 a.m. and again at 1 p.m., so you get two chances to grab your spot in line. Move quickly through the prompts to land that coveted boarding group spot. You won't need to be in the park at 7 a.m. to join the queue, but you'll want to be quick. Boarding passes often disappear in seconds, so we recommend having a clock nearby to count down to release time. We have a full guide on virtual queues over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. Don't stress, it's all there, so head there to brush up on your knowledge. We'll link it in the description below for you. Now, if you're unable to snag a spot in the virtual queue or you want to guarantee a slightly shorter wait because that virtual queue wait is still going to be long, you can purchase Disney's pay-per-ride option, otherwise known as individual attraction selections, through Genie+. Plus. It works like this. If you're a guest at a Disney-owned hotel, you can access the ride via Disney Genie at or after 7 a.m. on the day of your Epcot visit and buy Lightning Lane access for the ride. If you're not staying at a Disney World hotel, you'll have to wait until you scan your ticket into the park to be able to buy Lightning Lane access. Note that either way, you must have a Park Pass reservation for Epcot for that day. You'll be able to choose a specific window of time to visit the ride, and pricing for Cosmic Rewind, though it's not yet known, currently the highest priced attraction in Disney World is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, which is $15 per person per ride plus tax. Probably going to be somewhere around there, at least for the first few weeks. Okay, hidden details. Ready for a few fun Easter eggs. This ride is packed with hidden details and fun Easter eggs. We got the chance to talk to a lot of Imagineers today and they were so, so, so excited about this ride. It is an incredible ride, but they hid a lot of cool stuff in it too. This is Guardians of the Galaxy. So you know you're in for a great soundtrack. There are six different songs that might play during your ride and you never know which one you're gonna get. September, Disco Inferno, Conga, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, which of course is my favorite. I Ran and One Way or Another are the songs that made the final soundtrack, though Imagineers considered over a hundred possible songs. And I had a lot of fun talking to some Imagineers about those songs. They said that every Imagineer had one that they really, really, really wanted to make the final cut and they would ride with it and then it wouldn't make the final cut and they'd be really sad about it. <laughs> so music that didn't make that cut is actually played in the exit queue. The rest of the music in the ride is by composer Tyler Bates, who worked on the films, and he created more than two hours of new music just for the ride. Music isn't the only thing that'll make each ride unique, though. At the end of the ride, the Guardians will talk to you, and there are a few different scripts you might hear. They struggle over the pronunciation of Epcot and joke about the name's meaning, and in the queue, you can spot a few Easter eggs and nods to old Epcot as well. You may catch Star-Lord reminiscing about his childhood trip to Epcot. I went there as a kid, and I, I, I mean, I cannot wait to get to go back and ride Horizon. There's a hidden Mickey in the Zandarian Model City, which takes some inspiration from Disney's Progress City model, you know, the one you can see over on the People Mover. You can also catch a glimpse of Walt Disney with an original schematic for Progress City on screens throughout the queue. In the queue, there was also a reference to Maelstrom, the dark ride in the Norway Pavilion that was closed and replaced by Frozen Ever After. It appears as an energy schematic. Now, Imagineers tell us that wasn't intentional, but come on. In the pre-show, Nova Prime specifically references the Big Bang, a 
and nod to Universe of Energy, which previously occupied the Cosmic Rewind building. And we noticed some other throwbacks to Universe of Energy Pavilion and Ellen's energy adventure on a column in the ride queue. The top left says Ellen, the top right says Alex, the bottom left says E equals MC squared, and the bottom right says Dino. Once you're actually on the ride, you can also hear a bit of what sounds like an electric guitar version of the old Universe of Energy theme song playing on the Guardian's ship as they fly into space. After the second pre-show, you get a look at the ship's schematics where you might notice the Universe of Energy symbol and a partial Xandarian alphabet as well. You can fit four spaceship Earths inside the building. It is seriously massive. There's an on-ride photo as well, so be sure to smile at the beginning of the ride. And there's also a magic shot location in front of the ride where you can get a Nova Corps passport, a magic shot with a bunch of spaceships in the air, or one with Groot peeking into the frame. Now, what would a Disney ride be without some accompanying merchandise, right? There's a whole new shop dedicated to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind souvenirs. It's called Treasures of Xandar, and it showcases four different merchandise collections featuring retro designs on everything from tees to fanny packs, water bottles, jackets, and more. There's even a full Groot Through the Years collection, so you can load up on plushes and squishy toys of Groot at any age. And we've got even more photos on DisneyFoodBlog.com if you want to ready your shopping list now. So I promised we'd get to some tips. Here we go. Since Cosmic Rewind isn't using a standby line to start, you won't need to worry about rushing to Epcot before it opens. But you will need to make sure you set that alarm and maybe a backup alarm so that you don't sleep through the release of the virtual queue or individual attraction selection spots. No matter where you sit, front row or back row, your ride vehicle will pivot so you're focusing on the story. But we did get a tip to sit in the middle for the best view of the action, so that's going to be probably row number five. Middle cars will line right up with the Guardians as they say goodbye at the end of the ride. You're not going to miss any of the things on the screens, so that's a good one to do. I rode in, in several seats. I rode in the very front, the very back, and the middle as well. Now, the nausea factor is very, very real for some folks, like I said. After my second ride, I had to go get some Dramamine from the first aid folks in Epcot because I knew I couldn't go back on that ride without taking some nausea medication. And so what I ended up doing to to abate that a little bit towards the end of the day is I ate something, don't go on this ride, without eating something. I know the Mission Space astronauts, the astronauts who helped develop Mission Space always used to say to eat a banana before you go on Mission Space so you don't feel sick. So maybe that's a good thing, kind of a nice light breakfast before you go on this ride. But definitely have something in your stomach. And secondarily, do take Dramamine or use nausea bands, whatever you would kind of use for motion sickness regularly. And also try requesting row five five or six there too. They seem to be a little bit less intense, at least they were for me. The front of the train, of course, is gonna go the fastest on that backward launch, and it kind of launches backwards and then goes up a hill backwards, and that's when your stomach really flips and you may not recover from that. And in the back of the train, of course, you feel the real pull from the backward launch there, so that can not be the best either. I think the front of the train was the worst for me as far as nausea, the back of the train was the second worst and the middle was okay. Now, if you do take Dramamine, take it about 30 minutes to an hour before you get on the ride. All right, is this new ride worth the hype? Well, if you're a major Marvel fan, you are probably thrilled to have some MCU representation on the East Coast finally. And if you're just an Epcot fan, you're either pumped about having a new thrill ride in the park or bummed and confused as to why superheroes are showing up next to Mission Space. We see your comments, Guardians haters. We'll admit when this ride was first announced, it seemed like an odd fit for Epcot, but the storyline of the ride at least makes it believable that a fictional planet might set up a cultural pavilion in a park like this, enough so that you can let it go and have fun on the ride, enjoying it for what it is. So there are going to be a lot of Space Mountain comparisons, indoor roller coaster, whipping through space, stars everywhere, all dark, can't see anything. On paper, it sounds the same, but this ride is using a lot of new technology to make it something that is really next level compared to the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland attractions. It's not rickety, and you can really see the story playing out around you as opposed to just being tossed around in the dark like Space Mountain. In fact, the thing that I was really comparing it to most was like a ghost galaxy or hyperspace mountain over in Disneyland with those overlays where you actually have screens playing things while you're riding through Space Mountain. That's a better comparison than Disney World's Space Mountain. 
But the scale of this ride is utterly massive. There are the biggest screens you've ever seen in your life. You don't even understand how huge they are because of course you can't see the edges because it's dark, but they are just taking up the entire space around you. There really is no end to what you see. You do feel like you are flying through the universe. So it's a very impressive ride. It's a lot of fun. It is a classic thrill ride, which I think Disney hasn't sort of brought to a park in a while. Epcot has never really had a ride like that. It is a classic thrill ride, a classic coaster, at the same time as everything about it is brand new. So I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy it a lot. They're gonna have a blast. Again, families can enjoy this together. If you have little, little kids, you know, they're not gonna be able to ride it, of course. I'm sure there will be rider switch available here. But if anyone has had issues with motion sickness on coasters before or on spinning rides, definitely consider the Dramamine or those nausea bands. Now, is it as wildly impressive as Rise of the Resistance? It depends, sort of. The technology is incredible, the depth of of the history packed into this ride is amazing and you're gonna see new things every time you ride and you're gonna see new Easter eggs every time you ride. But the story isn't quite as developed as Rise of the Resistance and it doesn't feel as hugely impressive as Rise maybe, but it is very, very fun. It's something that's on a scale that Disney's never done before in terms of a coaster. And if you don't get motion sick, you're gonna be able to have a super blast on this for sure. So as an 80s Epcot fan, as a child of Epcot, Universe of Energy fan, Horizons fan, World of Motion fan, I do like the ride. I'm glad it's in Epcot. I think it makes that particular park even more promising. And I'm excited to see the rest of the reveals in Epcot too. I'm excited for that park to finally come back into its own. So we're going to continue bringing you the latest news on Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, along with the rest of the openings and changes coming to Epcot right here on our YouTube channel, on DisneyFoodBlog.com, and on all of our social channels. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to see our latest finds in Disney World. And of course, sign up for that newsletter so you don't miss a single bit of Disney Parks news before your trip. We've got a lot more exciting announcements coming from Disney on the horizon, and you do not want to miss out. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for coming on this ride with me. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.